Another wonderful flexibility exercise, like the noodle, is the spider. Now, Carmine came up with some very cute names for these exercises. You can understand what the spider is when you practice it. You've been practicing the spider, correct? I have. Tell us about the spider. Well, the spider is a great way to get through all the registers of the horn. And it's especially powerful for me when I do it around a break because you have to go over it over and over again. Awesome. What is your first note that you normally start your spiders on? I usually start on middle C. Let's hear your first version of a spider starting on a middle C. job. They've really improved since I last heard them, Alex. Thanks, Julie. The only thing I want to suggest, and I'm going to ask you to do them again, is to pay more attention to listening than to thinking. Okay. And let's hear what happens to your sound when you listen as opposed to think. <laughs> Pretty obvious what happens to your sound when you listen. Yeah. In your own words. Well, when I'm listening, I'm listening so I can hear if something's even. And I think when I listen, just the act itself makes things more even and beautiful because you're paying attention to it. And the first time through, what were you paying attention to? I was thinking about the time. Okay. I was spending all of my attention on subdividing mm -hmm. without really paying attention to what was coming out my bell. Now this time, were you still subdividing? Yes, I was. Was there a difference in the percentage of your attention? Yeah, I would say that it was more listening than subdividing that mm -hmm. time around. Have you ever tried listening to the subdivision inside the sound? I don't think I have, Julie. Check this out. <laughs> try. So I was actually feeling a lot of upbeats, you know, uh, e, e, uh, uh, uh. and I was listening very carefully. Okay. Just Alex. Thank you. Huge difference. So there's a difference between just thinking, there's a difference between just listening, and then there's this beautiful point where they meet, where you can listen and think, or in your case, feel the time inside the sound. That's where I like to hang out most <clears throat> of the time. It's interesting because my mind doesn't naturally want to go there. I find it going all sorts of places while I'm doing these exercises. Mm -hmm. But I just have to keep bringing it back 
to the same place whenever I notice it wandering off. And also interesting to my ears and eyes was how much smoother your transitions were between the notes in this last version. That's right. It was seamless. So there's a beautiful balance between listening and feeling and thinking about that much. Make sense? Makes sense to me. Awesome. Let's do some variations on the spiders. Have you ever tried them twice as fast? Yes, I have. Show me. Again, I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. how much of the percentage of your attention was listening for your tone and feeling the time inside the sound? I think I was listening more, but again, I found my mind wandering to maybe what my lips were doing or, ah. or subdividing a little bit. Thank you for your honesty. Yes, a lot of people, so many of my students spend a lot of their time thinking about how their lips feel. Do you swim? Not much. Do you run? Sure. When you run, how much time do you spend thinking about your feet? None at all, really. Imagine if you did. Probably be confusing. You would trip. I'd like to ask you to develop the same trust and reflex with your lips when you play the French horn as you do when you run. Let it go. Just get into the momentum. As long as you keep good time and you're listening and breathing and moving at a steady pace, your lips will follow reflexively. And therein lies some of the magic of the training of the Caruso method. Let me show you a little bit about what I mean uh, with the variation of spider, which is twice as fast. Okay. <laughs> Basically just going for the ride. Not one part of my consciousness was on my lips. Zero. Hmm. I was keeping time, trying to remember the right notes, and listening very intently and just keeping the blow steady and even. When you're in the flow of the sound and the time and not fussing about how to move your lips, it sounds beautiful. Oh. Give it a try. Nice job. Takes a discipline to stay there, doesn't it? It does. It's challenging to keep my mind in the right place. Yeah, yeah, understood. And I, again, want to encourage you and all players listening to this to leave your lips alone. Let them do their job by being trained reflexively and not fussing about how to get them there. Mm -hmm. Keep the time, keep the blow, keep your ears. Julie, really, is there anything that you do to train yourself to be able to keep your attention in the right place? I had the great privilege of studying with Carmine since I was 13. So my attention has always been on the time, always. I was just trained at a young age, and I was never really preoccupied from a young age with what are my lips doing? Are they doing the right thing? The only time I started thinking about my lips was when I learned to play in the low register, which we covered in another lesson having to do with even and equal pressure. So I think early training is a great thing, and these Caruso exercises work really well with young kids. Mm -hmm. 
Other than that, I have a fussy ear. I know what I want it to sound like. I worked at the Met for 25 years, which brings tears to my eyes because I was surrounded by the greatest sounds on earth. I grew up with Pavarotti in my ear, with Joan Sutherland in my ear, etc. The greatest of the greats, this is the sound I have, Marilyn Horn. I want to sound just like them. So my goal was always to have a beautiful sound. And what impressed me was when a singer could move through all the passaggios, which is what they call register breaks, and maintain the integrity and beauty of sound. And that's always my goal on the horn as a player and as a teacher.